I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. My special guest today is an extraordinary woman who is the president of Wilson Care Group. She is Shelly Wilson, and today we are going beyond health care. Hey, Shelly, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Rusty. Thank you. I know that you grew up on a farm in Iowa, and I want to know what were the best parts of growing up on a farm? Oh, my goodness. You know what? When you're little, you really don't appreciate um, what you have and, you know, you don't have the perspective. Uh, but certainly as an adult, um, I appreciate the values that I that I have now um, because of where I came from. You know, it, it's very similar to Hawaii where, um, you know, people take care of one another. Everyone helps out. Um, uh, you know, helps their neighbors out. You could walk across the street and borrow eggs from just about anyone. Um, but fortunately, growing up on a farm, um, we had lots of eggs. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we didn't have to borrow too many eggs. But, you know, um, I, uh, I think just having such a wholesome upbringing was certainly valuable and, and being um, part of such a tight knit community um, that really gave me, you know, the values and my and my foundation in life and what I what I've accomplished and who I am um, definitely is from being that little Iowa farm girl, and I was quite quite the tomboy uh, growing up. So um, I think that's always something that people uh, think is very odd that I am so girly now. But yeah, I was uh, definitely in the dirt and. Uh, and, and always in trouble uh, with something on the farm. So were you driving tractors and then did you guys have a bunch of animals on the farm? Oh yes, uh, that was the first vehicle I ever drove uh, was a tractor. Um, and yeah, we did, have, uh, we did have a lot of animals. And from the time I was small, I was always trying to heal um, you know, the sick animals or if there was uh, somebody that was down and out, I used to, um, always find that broken wing bird. So I think healthcare, um, the calling for healthcare was definitely um, part of who I was from being quite, quite young. Shelly, after high school, why did you join the Army? You know, I um, grew up in very humble beginnings and um, my family didn't have a lot of money. And I knew that um, as a young person, um, I was uh, living in a, in a small town and I, I just wanted to see the world. I wanted to get out of that um, very small farming community. And, and now, like I said, I have perspective and I'm fortunate that I come from that background. But as a teenager, all I wanted to do was leave. I wanted to get the heck out of Dodge and figure out how um, I was gonna see the world and, um, and, and be, become my own person. I knew that um, finding a farmer and, and settling down um, to continue that life wasn't, wasn't in my future. So I decided when I was a junior in high school um, to join the military. That was a, a great option for me to go to school and, and get out of Iowa. Um, so that's really why I ended up uh, in the army and wanting to, you know, um, be in healthcare or find some kind of um, healthcare uh, future and career. I uh, joined the military as a combat medic in the army. Shelley, I heard that you uh, were involved in a really bad, serious accident. Can you tell me about what happened? Yeah, um, I uh, had uh, left for boot camp the day after um, uh, graduating from high school, and I was 17 at the time. I actually celebrated my 18th birthday um, at boot camp doing a ton of push-ups. So um, my 18th birthday, I will forever remember um, looking at uh, my drill sergeant's combat boots 
um, doing many, many push-ups. But I was uh, in training with the Army for about six months um, between boot camp and my advanced training. And I came back in November of um, that year. And uh, my first weekend back with my unit in Iowa, um, I was in a really bad um, uh, motor vehicle accident in the Army. I was on active duty at the time. So I was, uh, I was hit by a drunk driver and I ended up um, in uh, really bad shape. And surprisingly, growing up on a farm and being the tomboy that I was, I'd never, ever had a broken bone. I'd never been to the hospital. I'd never had any injuries um, as a child. But within that 10 seconds, I um, was uh, from head to toe um, injured. I ended up with a, a right knee replacement. My left arm was uh, going to be amputated for about six months off and on. Um, it was a very difficult time um, trying to save my arm. My uh, face had multiple fractures. Um, I was blind for a while. My left foot was crushed. So um, because of all the injuries, opposite arm, opposite legs, um, I ended up just having to, to be confined to a wheelchair for about two years. And yeah, just a, a very, very um, significant accident and, and difficult time as a, as a teenager, I was only 18. Um, and my family was working and everyone was uh, busy and trying to take care of me. The military was flying me all over the country for surgeries and procedures. And um, yeah, it, it was a very, very dark time, but also I think um, it, a very positive experience because of that accident, I'm really the person I am today. Um, and the inspiration for what I do now is because of that experience. Well, I have to say you are one tough person and it, I mean, it's inspiring to see, you know, your perspective, you know, to really choose to look at things in a positive way, how it actually helped you. And in 1996, you opened um, Wilson Home Care. Why did you start Wilson Home Care? You know, um, when when my family was trying to take care of me at home, it was it was very very difficult for them, and I was uh, I was definitely a burden, um, having you know having to to rely on them for everything from bathing me and you know feeding me, dressing me, taking me to different doctors' appointments, and um, and I was. You know, I was uh, frustrated um, from having to be confined to a wheelchair and, and we're, we're sometimes not very nice to the people that love us the most. And we're not, we're not um, on our best behavior with our family members. But when I would go to the doctor, you're on your best behavior and you're so nice to the staff and the nurses and everyone that's helping to care for you, but with your family, um, it's easy to to be um, grumpy and um, and I, I was obviously very miserable at the time and and in a lot of pain all the time but um, you know I had a, a lot of a lot of time to think um, during my recovery and I eventually it was the December um, it was the December of uh, 1995 um, that my friends, um, I had friends in the military that were in Hawaii that reached out to me and said, why on earth are you in Iowa? It's the dead of winter. It's freezing cold there. You must come to Hawaii and thaw out a little bit and finish your recovery at Tripler Army Medical Center. And so I said, why not? Um, and I got on a plane. Um, well, somebody rolled me on a plane because I was still um, in a wheelchair. And I came to Hawaii for a short period of time to just um, have a little break. And then in 1996, I um, started Wilson Home Care. I never left Hawaii, obviously, and I reattached with the Hawaii Army National Guard to finish out my um, military service. But I, I started Wilson Home Care because of my own personal experience in knowing that if I were to have had the help that we provide to so many people in our community, it would have been such a relief 
for my family. And, and certainly for me, my experience in being um, cared for and, and healing, um, you know, mentally and psychologically, emotionally, it's so important that you have a support team when, when you're going through any kind of illness or, or injury. And I think having a, a, a caregiver and somebody that wasn't related to me would have been a really positive um, experience for me. So I started um, Wilson Home Care when I was 21. And um, I, uh, yeah, I, I really, I didn't know anything about business. I just knew that I was passionate about this uh, mission and, and this idea of people receiving the care and help that they need in their own homes. And um, I thought, you know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm not going to die. <laughs> and that really became my benchmark in life um, after surviving, you know, this near death experience uh, in the military. My benchmark was, you know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm not going to, I'm not going to die. So um, trying new things and, and putting myself out there. Um, I, I, you know, I, I had nothing to lose after my experience with, with the accident. And now, Shelly, you have over 500 staff. And I want to ask you, what character traits do you look for in hiring your staff? Oh, wow. You know, that's, uh, that's such an easy answer. You know, the, the passion to care for others, you know, people have to have the heart for what we do. It's, uh, it's a very emotional business um, that we're in and being able to love and care for those people in need that are are suffering and uh, you know down and out. That, that's the most important trait in any nurse or caregiver or anybody in in healthcare for that matter. Just the people that have the heart for for loving and nurturing those in need. And then you opened up a beautiful building in Kailua in 2013 for your Wilson Senior Living. Uh, tell me more yeah. about that facility. Yeah, you know, um, through the years, we've had many, um, many families that have come to us and, and requested different types of long-term care models. And, and long-term care is not just for Kapuna. It's also for Keiki. We have, uh, we have a children's division. We have young people that we care for. We have elderly people that we care for. But I think that it's very, very difficult for families to figure out what, you know, what the model is for them. It's so personal for each family and each individual, whether, you know, they're, they're working and a lot of sandwich generation um, families as well, where they have small children that they're caring for, and they're also caring for their parents. And so I think it's hard to figure out you know, is it home care? Does that help to supplement um, services and care for your loved ones? Or is it adult daycare? Is it a senior living facility? Is it an independent living facility? There's a lot of different models um, that families are in need of. And we, we don't necessarily have an abundance of those resources in Hawaii. Um, it's quite costly to do business out here and it's very costly to build um, homes and facilities for, for, for anyone, let alone a, a business model. So I um, had numerous requests through the years for families that needed 24-hour care for their loved ones. So I decided um, in 2007 to develop the senior living model um, with, uh, with a few um, partners in healthcare. Um, I, I don't have business partners, but the model that I that I really was drawn to um, is this, this model called a purposeful life. And so building a special home um, for Kapuna, there's 22 private um, suites uh, in the home for senior living, but it's really about having a purposeful life when our residents wake up in the morning, having fellowship and, and sharing time with their peers, having meals together, having activities, things to look forward to. Um, there's, there's a lot of different uh, parts of the formula that make uh, our home so different and unique in Hawaii. 
uh, but it gives people that sense of something to look forward to, like we all need to keep us going. We're all very social creatures and not just having, um, you know, an elderly facility, but giving, giving hope to our residents, our seniors about things that are coming, uh, fun things that they're going to be experiencing or going through and, and time together. So um, not only did we build the, the bricks and mortar um, for our home, but also the infrastructure and the mission um, of our home is, is uh, almost more important than the physical aspects of it. I like hearing all of that, Shelley. And what are you doing uh, now to adapt and adjust during this coronavirus situation? Well, you know, that is a, that's a loaded question because there's, um, I, I feel like 99,000 things <laughs> that we've done since January. Um, you know, we, everyone in healthcare had to start quite early in preparing um, our community and our businesses to, to be um, in the right place when the virus came to Hawaii. So we have been literally working seven days a week, 16 hour days from, from January. But the senior living home was probably the most significant um, component in, in regards to seeing and hearing what the nation, all of our long-term care partners and colleagues on the mainland have experienced and many, many challenges with outbreak and loss of life um, across the nation. And so our team sat down and we came up with different strategies for our home care model and certainly um, senior living. And uh, early on um, in, um, let's see here, March, um, we had a group of uh, nurses and caregivers that moved into uh, senior living and they have been living there with our residents, um, uh, part of the family, and we rotate um, our team out every 30 days. So there's a, uh, um, Staff are basically living um, side by side with our residents, and um, and in order to keep everyone safe and make sure that we have no exposure at all, uh, families are visiting through the window, and virtually we have a lot of different programs that um, we're utilizing in the home for for video, um, uh, you know, messages and also uh, video calls with loved ones and video yoga. We have video, um, hula, all of our activities. We used to have this wonderful group of young boys um, from this basketball team that we've sponsored for years. They would come and play board games with our seniors on a regular basis. And now we have um, many, many organizations in the community that have reached out to us that are in interacting and engaging. We had a group of Punahou kids that were playing um, these virtual games with our seniors um, this last week, and they had a blast. Uh, so we're just we're reinventing ourselves in some ways. The the model of having that purposeful life and having things to look forward to is is different, and um, we're finding ways to overcome the physical presence of uh, of that. And then in home care, um, early on in uh, in February and March, we uh, gave everyone masks. All of our staff uh, were in PPE um, much earlier than even recommendations um, from the Department of Health or CDC. Uh, but we gave masks to our staff and also our patients. We have a mask program and, and making sure that everyone has the proper PPE uh, when necessary. We adapted and, and uh, created a few new programs um, also to supplement uh, some of the other um, senior programs in our community that had to close, like uh, the adult daycares all had to close. So we um, have an errand um, program with uh, um, also a bath service. A lot of individuals that um, were going to senior daycare were receiving those types of services. So we're trying to help you know, supplement that group. Um, and then we also have a new program called Be Well Hawaii. Uh, where we take care of COVID patients um, that are coming out of the hospital or, or people that have family members that have COVID. Um, but it's, it's definitely been a roller coaster for all of us. 
um, in figuring out how we can safely take care of um, all of our staff and all of our clients and all of the families. And we've been very successful in not having any outbreak at all, uh, whether it's uh, through home care or through our senior living facility. And we, we also have wounded warriors on all of the neighbor islands um, as well. And we're virtually seeing um, each one of those, uh, of those soldiers. So it's been, uh, it's, been, it's been an interesting time for sure. Shelly, you know, in my books, I talk about making an, an impact, which you're doing. I talk about passion, which you have found. And I talk about creating a superior culture of excellence, which you are doing. How important is it for people to really find their passion, but then to also pursue their passion like you're doing? You know, I think um, there's nothing, nothing more important. And I know that there's a lot of programs and, and, you know, the reality TV shows like Shark Tank, where people um, see that and they think, oh my gosh, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to start my own business. It seems so exciting. And, and, you know, sometimes it might even seem glamorous and, and it's really not. <laughs> it's it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, and and it's it's hard. It, it takes a lot of grit um, to be in business and to and to do what you love doing. And if you're not passionate, I think it, you know it, nothing will get you through the hard days if you don't truly, truly love and believe in what you're doing. Um, you can't chase money that doesn't give you the sustainable future. You know, it's a mental, psychological, emotional um, roller coaster that you go through in life. And uh, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. We work more than we do anything else. And in order to overcome the challenges, uh, yeah, the passion is, is absolutely critical. I think that's the number one component for, for anything, any career that anyone pursues. Um, in order to be successful, you, you must, must have passion. Shelly, you're also the founder of Mission First Responders. Tell me what that is. Yeah, uh, you know, I also am part of an organization called the Young Presidents Organization, and it's an international group of, of, of presidents um, that have all been successful in different industries and um, in different ways in life, um, from maybe inheriting a family business, or you've started your own, or you're working for a corporation, but but all presidents. And, and this group has been instrumental in my career over the course of the last few years um, when I was, uh, when I joined this, this group. And, and I, I never, ever thought that uh, I would be impacted so significantly by sharing best practices and the information in my industry with presidents from all over the globe. Um, but this pandemic has really brought us together in a different, in a different way. And so having resources to personal protective equipment, medical supplies, is, is been very difficult for everyone around the world, uh, whether it's a hospital, a country, a state, a city, uh, you name it, everyone is having a difficult time finding personal protective equipment. And so in talking to a lot of my um, associates and colleagues from around the world, I, I knew that Hawaii would have a difficult time in getting PPE just as everyone else has, but we were the last ones literally on the planet to get the virus. And so all of these supplies um, are quite oversourced and, um, and hard to find. So I decided to um, start Mission First Responders to, to really educate our community on personal protective equipment and the necessity of our healthcare providers and our first responders, the police, the firefighters, the ambulance drivers, um, anyone that is uh, in need of the, the PPE, just to educate everyone as to what it is and, um, and why we need it and how we need to support our, our hospitals and 
um, and these very, very special heroes that work in our community. And, and from there, it grew into um, a, a, a platform with Flash and Maleko on their um, TV program. And so we uh, were able to raise funds as well to donate PPE to the various hospitals and some of our healthcare facilities. Um, and, and I think, you know, people, you know, it's counterintuitive to think about healthcare right now, think, thinking a lot of people think that everyone's doing very well in healthcare because we have all these sick people. But in fact, the hospitals are really struggling and they struggle, you know, on a, on a good day. Um, they're not all privately funded and their, you know, reimbursements from the federal and state governments are not 100% of what true costs are sometimes. And now a lot of people are not going to the doctor. So the elective procedures are way down. Um, you know, they're, they've had to um, really, really limit the amount of people that are coming and going in different, um, in different areas of, of healthcare. But everyone in healthcare is having just as hard of a time, if not harder, than every other industry. And in addition to these other challenges, logistically and getting people to go to the doctor and receive these services that they need, we all also have to pay for PPE. And we've all used PPE for many, many years, but now this is a different level of everyone has to have PPE on all the time. It's very expensive. Um, it's also very difficult to get, as I mentioned. So the cost of the PPE that we typically paid are astronomical. Uh, you know, gowns that we used to pay a few dollars for are now on the internet for fifteen dollars. These are disposable gowns that um, you know you'd never think that would ever you know you'd never have to pay those those kinds of prices. So. I started bringing in um, large supply of, uh, of PPE back in January through my YPO organization. We've all helped one another to get supplies of medical equipment to, to different places around the world and also in the United States. We helped to fly um, a plane full of ventilators to New York City a few months ago um, and getting different access to supplies that, that most people don't don't have access to just through our networks. So I've been bringing um, huge volumes, huge volumes of PPE into Hawaii since January and helping with some of our state and government entities and agencies, as well as the, the healthcare facilities um, throughout the state and the neighbor islands, we've flown um, medical equipment and medical supplies um, to all of the neighbor islands uh, as well. So it's, it's just sort of kept on growing and um, mission first responders in wanting our community just to know and be in the know about that turned into Be Well Hawaii, which is um, a, a, another company that I started for uh, medical supplies and PPE supplies just for healthcare um, providers and, and first responders. And um, yeah, so it's been, it's, a, you know, Kind of grown on its own organically. Shelly, you know, it's it's amazing the huge positive impact that you are doing, you know, with our community. I want to thank you for taking time, you know, in your schedule to be on the show. I want more Shelly Wilsons in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think everybody can make an impact and, um, you know, and and, and you know, the, I'm in healthcare, and we, um, you know, we've been trying to help all of our friends and neighbors, but and also the business community. We we have a we have another um, entity through Aloha Mask, um, AlohaMask.com. We also are providing um, PPE to our business community um, as well, and also just the general public, and making sure that everyone is safe and and has their medical um, supplies and, and PPE that they need. And it's non-medical PPE that, that we have available through Aloha Mask. But I think it's just important that everyone knows that one person can make a difference. You don't have to have um, you know, a, a huge group of 
people and it's not, don't wait for everyone else to come up with the idea or take action or try to make an impact. It, it can just take one person that starts a movement that is going to, to change someone's life. Or in this instance, I hope that we're able to save some people's lives and making sure that Hawaii has the PPE that we need. And, you know, it, education is very powerful as well. Making sure people know um, that uh, you, you have to stay safe. We have to stay vigilant. Everyone knows that our numbers are on the rise with our, our outbreak. And it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long journey for all of us. And we're fortunate that we do live in Hawaii where people stick together and love one another. But it just takes one person to make an impact. And, and I certainly didn't do this on my own. There are many, many people in my organization and also in the community that have supported us, um, our companies, and certainly me through the years. It's it's uh, it's it's definitely not um, uh, a, a one person show, but um, I appreciate you in helping to bring stories to the community as well and keeping us informed. And and you've had such an amazing career, and and thank you for your inspiration for all of us too. Well, Shelly, you definitely go beyond the lines and you're, you're a definite inspiration to all of us and just wanted to thank you again for your time. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Shelley and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.